She might not look like much right now, but one of these days I'm going to drive this baby. This is a uh, homemade roadster, all made out of old parts. has a 44 front axle, 33 Chevy frame rails, 53 Cadillac engine. That's a 47 Ford fire truck cab chopped and channeled over the frame with the roof sawed off. It's been sawed uh, just above the door moldings. Has a 56 Buick steering column, 57 Ford steering box, 28 Dodge Dash, Dynaflow transmission, 57 Ford 9 inch rear end. This is a uh, 57 Ford hood that's been turned into the turtle deck here. Uh, my plans are to crank the mother up and drive her with as few modifications that I have to make to make it roadworthy. I am going to saw the frame in half and drop it down just about the width of that frame so that I can get my bottom down in there nice and close to the ground. Got a guy in California making me some headers for it. Got a short radiator and an A model grill shell to go on it. I don't know about you, but this is my idea of what love looks like. Amen and hallelujah. at right here is a set of twin one barrel carburetors on an old uh, uh, piece of speed equipment that allows them to fit onto a, a standard four barrel intake. These are wicked cool but they don't work or at least they don't work in the condition they're in right now. They would have to be completely taken apart and rebuilt and cleaned and everything. These are actually old Ford carburetors which is uh, I don't know if you can see the Ford emblem on it or not but that's wicked cool. What I do have here is a, uh, a good uh, Carter AFB. Um, actually, this carburetor needs rebuilding too, but I have one just like it outside on my on my hot rod and I'm on my Rambler that I can take off and switch over and put right into place here. And I know it works, so I think that's the next step is to uh, clean up that manifold, stop up the uh, vacuum leak holes, pull the carb off the other car, Rambler, hook it to here, and we'll see if she'll run. There's so many things here I'd like to record um, because I think it's all of interest and not the kind of thing that just everybody knows. Let me just start off by saying today is December the 25th. Uh, it's Christmas Day. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Um, I am wanting to crank 
the engine in the hot rod. This is a 1953 Cadillac 331 engine. Um, I pulled all the plugs out. I started messing with this thing a couple of days ago right after I, what I did was I went out and bought a 6 volt battery because it has a 6 volt starter. Um, the first time I turned it over with the plugs in it, it barely turned over. Even after I took the plugs out, it still kind of barely turned over. It's been sitting for a couple of years since it ran. I was told it was running when it was pulled out of the car. You know how that story goes. Really cool, I wanted to show you. Like I was saying, since it's not a 12 volt system, my regular test light doesn't work. But I have this gauge that I found at a yard sale. It's a voltmeter. I picked it up because uh, I just thought it looked really cool. The old voltmeter has worked, and I'm going to show you it working. I'm going to touch this to the uh, ignition wire. You see that needle move ever so slightly? Well, that's it. It's, it's basically enough to tell me that uh, I've got six volts of power ran to the ignition. So anyway, that's just an interesting point. I, I like this old stuff. I love this uh, gauge. To me, it's just, I mean, what could be better than that? I, I think, I'm thinking, once I get this car finished, I might put that thing right up on the dash. That might just be my voltmeter. Uh, it would be perfect for this car. It, it's so much fun. I'm finding so many parts that I've saved for this thing down through the years. Um, I was looking around while I was going, I found some brake parts. I've got some, uh, I've got some uh, disc brakes to go on the front of this thing already. Uh, I'm looking for some shoe brake parts to go in the rear end. It's 57 Ford rear end. I'm going to need some springs and uh, cylinders and all that fun stuff. But it's just wicked fun to be finding all these pieces and parts that I'm going to eventually, you know, I've got a radiator for it right here, you know, here's another example of, uh, you know, there's a radiator, they're all set to go. Um, it's just wicked fun to see this all come together, and I'm like a, I'm like a kid at Christmas, <laughs> today is December the 25th, it is Christmas, and uh, I'm like a kid at Christmas, I'm having a ball with this thing. Okay, next step, I have fire in my engine, my next step is I need uh, fuel, um, this is the original old fuel pump right here. Um, I took it all apart, blew it all out. It was it was quite full of dirt. I run it uh, through a line, a filter, into a gas can here, out the other end. And basically what I'm doing here, this is just kind of a test to make sure the fuel pump is working. The other thing I did is, uh, although you see an awful lot of wires here, I don't want any sparks while I'm doing this because I want to blow myself up. It's kind of funny because when I was a young fella, I used to set myself on fire regularly and thought nothing of it, but the older I get, the less inclined I am to do that. And basically, what should happen, I've uh, wired up the starter button now so that I'm not using the screwdriver and making sparks. What should happen is when I start cranking it, we should get gas coming out of that line. Can you see it? There it is, it's working. Okay, so, fuel pump works. Oh, the air compressor's going. Fuel pump works, we have power to it. I have to put a carburetor on here that fits. I have to stop up all these little holes like this one that would be vacuum leaks. Looks like I got some other vacuum lines and things that I have to look at. Probably clean all the leaves out of there and just make sure there's nothing else I need to be concerned with. Once all that's done, we'll see if she'll crank. Uh, and I don't know, maybe I should say this, I'm, I'm enjoying this a great deal. I just love working on this old thing. Something almost magical about it. Anyway, there's all that. Thank okay, you. up here in Maine, um, we get lots of snow in the winter. Along with the snow, they salt the roads pretty heavily. I won't drive this car. This is my 64 Rambler. It's a 350 Chevy engine, and I won't drive it on salted roads. So I put it out here and cover it up. Cut the insurance off. Let her sit all winter. I'm thinking that she won't mind a bit. If I borrow this carburetor, my thinking is uh, I'll use this carburetor to start the Cadillac. Once I got that up and running, I can rebuild that other carburetor, which will give me that one that's indoors for the winter. Oh, she looks a little moldy, don't she? But I bet she still works good. Anyway, um, I can work on that other one this winter and do a rebuild on it. Have this one ready to go back into place uh, come springtime and ready to roll again. So. That's what's next, is to pull this carb off, go from there.
How's that? She is so cr so close to cranking right now that I think she's just going to start at any moment. She's been doing that little sputter turnover where she goes, rrr, 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 and I'm just almost firing off. One of the things that is happening, I couldn't get this thing to turn over fast enough using that 6 volt battery. Uh, a guy emailed me and said he uses a 12 volt on his uh, 48 pickup. Been doing it for 20 years and it works fine. So I decided, what the heck, I've got a, a, a resistor over there to reduce the fire to the coil so that it should cut that down to 6 volt. And I did check it and it's still firing with the 12 volt battery. It turns over a heck of a lot better. The thing turned over with the 6 volt like it was just barely able to grind itself over. One of the problems I seem to have, I don't know if you can see the smoke or not, but I am obviously, I seem to be smoking the solenoid switch. It's still working. I hope it keeps working long enough for me to crank this thing. I figure what I'm going to have to do is pull that starter off, take it to a starter shop, get them to replace that with a, uh, a 12 volt solenoid. It could be that the, six, the solenoid just won't handle 12 volts, but the starter seems to be handling it fine. Anyway, um, I'm just giving the battery time to charge up a little bit here. And then uh, we'll see if we can get her to crank. I don't. I think it's just almost right there. Uh, let me just hit it a time or two and see what it sounds like. It's almost there. You can just hear it. Uh, one of the things I'm tempted to do, which I'm not going to do, is to start messing around with the uh, timing. Because once you get into that, you know how that goes. You just never know exactly where you're at. If, if it was running before, I don't see any reason to mess with it. Just leave it alone. Be patient. Get it to crank. Hadn't had gas in those pistons in ages. Probably right full of water and everything. But it's just a matter of time. If the, if the solenoid doesn't give out first, this thing's going to be running. I guarantee you. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, I'm about ready to knock off for the day. I, uh, my buddy Sonny came over and we set the timing on this thing, messed around with the carburetor a little tiny bit, and uh, you know what? She runs great. It's not smoking. Uh, for what it is, and for as long as it's been sitting around, I couldn't be happier. carburetor while I'm doing that. Sometimes it works that way. Okay, I'm doing a little planning. Um, uh, last you guys saw, I had the hot rod running, and I had quite a big mess too. I had a battery sitting right there on the floor. All these wires run all over the place. And you know, that's not what I'm going to want to do. What I'm going to want to do is have this be a, a turnkey automobile where you climb in it and crank it up. So I'm relocating the battery uh, right here, and that's going to be my gas can. And even though I realize it's a tiny gas can, what I'm going to do, not today, but eventually, is make a hole in the bottom of it in the back, have a pipe go through the wall, and have me a larger gas tank right inside that wall with kind of the illusion that, you know, you go to the gas station, you screw that little lid off, fill her up, which is exactly what you'll be doing. I'm going to have the fuel line uh, 
well at least for today come right out of the little spout there um, I've been trying to kind of organize the garage clean things up and, and plan all at the same time here's one of my plans this is an old uh, flathead Ford V8 type four-speed transmission with a really cool brake shifter which you know actually I might make a, a regular shifter out of that this thing has in it uh, the original old Dynaflow transmission that came with the Cadillac motor all I would have to do to drive this thing is make me a little drive shaft here and she's ready to roll once I get brakes on it and electrical and stuff which is fairly quick and easy to get her rolling that's not the way I eventually want it to be uh, I want a, I want a four speed, I want a shift, I want a clutch, I, I'm, I like gears, I like to shift gears so what I'm thinking of doing is uh, kind of quick and dirty get her on the road so that I can enjoy it while I save my money to buy all the stuff I need to change this over. It's not cheap to uh, convert a Cadillac motor into a straight shift. For one thing, the flywheel costs four hundred dollars or so, and the, and the adapter plates about another two and a half. And then I'm not even sure what all else I'm going to have to do to get to where I want. Plus, I need a decent transmission and all that stuff. So, I'll save my money for that while I'm riding around. In the meantime, uh, I think what I'm going to do is hook it all up and get her going, just so I can drive it. Even if I just drive it around the quarry back here, you know, have a little fun with it. I also got a, a choice on my grill shells. Uh, I got this one, which is, looks very much like a 32 Ford, but I don't think it is. It has those light holders kind of built into it. Um, but it does have that right look. And then I've got the old uh, A model grill shell right here, which I also kind of like. So, you know, it's nice to have choices. Uh, I'd have to cut the big one down if I use it, but uh, that's doable. And what else? Oh, yeah, I've got the, uh, the dual carburetors up here. Um, this is what I want on there, but I don't want those carbs. Those are old Ford carburetors. And from everything I can find out about them, even if they work right, they don't work very well. Uh, what I really need on there is a couple of Strombergs. They run about three and a half a piece if you get them good. That's something else I'll be saving my money for. Uh, front tires, I've got disc brakes to go on here. When I do, these old wheels will come off, and I've got spoke wheels to go on it. <clears throat> and eventually, I'll do the same thing on the back. Got spoke wheels for back there too. So I guess that's enough of me blabbering. I'll shut up and uh, get to work and see how much of this I can get done today. Um, Y'all have a nice day. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is run the fuel line from here. Uh, here's the fuel pump right here. It's an old AC fuel pump. I have to clean that thing up myself. Took it apart and put it back together. It's got a little diaphragm in there. It bounces up and down. That's really pretty cool. Anyway, we want to run this line down through there somewhere where it won't get tied up in anything, any moving parts. And back here into my temporary gas tank that's going to be more of a full-time gas tank after a while. Uh, on a drill press over here, I, I drilled the cap out. Got a little piece of, where's my camera? Got a little piece of paper in it right now, so it's hard to see, but it's just perfect for uh, this hose. If I take this and slip that in there, holy cow, that's a beauty. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run it from, uh, run it from up there where the fuel pump is, probably down along inside the frame rail, just like I did the wires over on that side, up to the gas tank. And uh, heck, I guess at that point we'll just fire the mother up and see how she runs. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, ignition system on this engine. Um, I've already got the di distributor cap off. I'm going to just stick that back on there just for looks. Um, Okay, simple as this. Uh, the fire comes through this hot wire into this reducer, out the other side of it, into the negative side of the coil, out the positive side, into the side of the distributor. Once it gets inside the distributor, um, it goes over to uh, two places, over to, to this set of points. Man, I wonder if you can see that. Probably not. Uh, and there's a there's a condenser in here the condenser Gets fired up with a load of electricity, which it releases when these points break when that happens it shoots fire um, Back up into the coil which shoots a bigger load of fire into the middle of this rotor button Which shoots it out the edge which connects to one of these contact points Inside your distributor cap through the wires and out to the spark plug once you get all that activity taking place, you get fire in the spark plug. I have a handy dandy spark plug right here grounded to the exhaust header just so I can see when it fires. As of yet, 
I have been unable to get fire. I'm not at all disappointed about that because um, the car has been sitting out in the weather for a couple of years. There's probably a boatload of moisture inside that distributor. Can you believe it? Today is Christmas Day and I can't get a can of WD-40. I've got a can around here that doesn't work. So WD-40 is uh, basically excellent for chasing away moisture. Tomorrow morning I'll get some, squirt it in that distributor cap, coat all the wires inside and out. We'll see if we have fire. If we have fire and we have the engine turning over, pretty much all we need after that is a good carburetor on there and some gas. Fire this baby up. That is the plan. Thanks for watching. Hope everybody's having a nice day now. Bye-bye. I'll show you right now how I'm cranking this thing, although I am going to, I do have a switch up here. I've got a, a switch that I'm going to use for an ignition switch. Even though it's an old light switch, it will work. And I've got an old push button switch that I can use for a starter switch. Uh, so that's, that's what I'll be hooking up in the morning. But for right now, I've been cranking it like this. Basically, you take your screwdriver, you reach it in, you touch the hot pole. There's a smaller pole right on top here. This is how I used to jump start cars back in the old days. And there she is, she's turning over. That might not sound too impressive to you, but to me, it does, because it's turning over better than it was when I first started this process. And, and eventually, uh, in by doing this, I'm going to get this thing loosened up to the point where I feel, and I'm going to get fire. And once I get fire and it's loosened up and turning over pretty well, I'll put a good carburetor on here, uh, get the fuel pump hooked up, get some gas run to it, and crank it. I want to hear it run. I'm not thinking I'm going to be able to drive this engine or want to drive it very much um, without rebuilding it, but I still would like to hear it run. You know, I was told it was a it was a running engine. I can't think of any reason why not to make it run. And once I do, then later if I want to come back and rebuild it, that's fine. But at least I'll I will have heard it run. I'll feel a bit more confident about putting what I'm going to have to put into it into it to make it go. So anyway, that's the whole story of that. Uh, I'm going to stop this now. Y'all have a nice day and thanks for watching. Okay, I think I'm done for today. What I've done basically is got this thing where I can reach over in it and flip the switch and crank it. There's my gas can, my battery all mounted up. Uh, I probably don't need to say this, but that's not where it's permanently going to be. But that's a good place for it to be while I'm messing around with it. Of course, you see some wires hanging around here and there. I'll, I'll get all that straightened up too. But basically, she's all fixed so that I can reach in here and flip the switch. There we go. So anyway, there's that. Um, I think what I'm going to do, it's cold here today. I, I, to illustrate, here's my drink. It's frozen solid, you can see that. But uh, this carburetor is one I borrowed off my other hot rod. I, I think I'm going to pull that one right there into the house and uh, maybe just take it all apart and fix it on the kitchen table. So I'll go to work on that. One of the things I always like to do is use up stuff, free stuff, good stuff, stuff that people give you. You, you can't probably see it from here, but there's a, a, a ground wire, a positive cable that runs off the negative side of that battery. I've got it grounded to the frame right in here. Uh, when Big Nell brought me a flathead motor that we thought we was going to put in this thing. And when, when we was unloading it, that ground strap was on there. And he said, Lord, look at that. If I'd known that was on there, I'd have kept it. Kind of a little joke between him and me. But the idea of using that on the car strikes me as absolutely appropriate. I mean, here's a man that's hauled a flathead engine, you know, 1,300 miles just to give it to me. You can't beat that. Also, these blue straps that I've got holding down the gas can, he gave me those. He said, here, just like take those, and he threw them in a the bucket. The gas line that I'm hooking up, you see this big roll of uh, plastic line here, was in a box on the side of the road in front of somebody's house with a free sign on it. Now, I figure you can always tell when an old guy dies. You take somebody like me, spend my whole life collecting a bunch of junk with the idea that I'm going to do something with it, and then one day I croak off, and the little lady or the relatives or whoever, they come along, and they say, what is all this junk? And they sit it out by the side of the road for free. So for me to be able to take this and use it for a gas line, that's the way things ought to be. That's the way I see it. Anyway, I'm going to run this line. When I get it through, I'll show you how pretty it looks. Okay, this is cool. I was going to uh, put a new ground strap on here. This is a a stove wire that I was using to crank it with the other night. But what I actually want is a real ground strap to ground the engine to the frame. 
I was going to make something out of this um, piece of cable and, and these big honking things here. Uh, but I just happened to find this, and, and I guess this is an original ground strap that was on the engine. It was just laying here on the floor when I turned around. My thinking is I can hook one side right in here to the motor mount, put the other side right here. I've actually threaded that hole uh, with this tool right here, tap and die set, stick it right in the back of a socket and turn it. And uh, I got a, a cute little butterfly kind of thing I can put on here to put that into. That way if I want to pull the motor out, I'll just turn that and hank the motor right out without having to, you know, uncoagulate the works. So that's kind of the thinking right there. Uh, I'll tell you why I'm doing this. I've moved the battery into the back of the car. Of course, this is all temporary, but it's better than the way it was when it was sitting on the ground. And I've got a hot wire that runs up to the starter. I've got the ground wire hooked to the frame on the car. So that if the uh, battery is grounded to the frame uh, and the engine is grounded to the frame, then everything is copacetic. And when I hit the starter button, she should stop. That is the plan. I thought I'd share that with y'all. Thank you. Okay, I'll show you the finished product. It doesn't really stand out all that much, which is not a bad thing. I mean, who really wants everybody to be looking at your uh, ground strap? You know what I mean? It's small. I think one really interesting thing about it is that it's brass, which tells me that the quality, you know, when they made this engine 50-something years ago, I guess it's was 55 years ago, was excellent. So anyway, that's the, that's the finished deal. And uh, Here's the other thing that I'm kind of interested in and excited about. This is the stock location of the fan with the stock spacer. With that location, this radiator can sit just inside there. You actually want it to be somewhat close, you know, maybe about an inch. You want more than that because some, I've seen a motor jump its motor mounts and go right through the radiator. So you don't want a lot, a lot more than that. But I could make me two little metal pieces that come out here, bolt this radiator in right here, have room to get my grill shell in place in the front of it with a mounting bar that runs back to each corner of the, of the cab there. I think that would be perfect. I'm excited just thinking about it. So that's that's where I'm going. I think that's the next thing I'm going to do is make me my two little brackets right here that the radio is going to sit on. And we'll go from there. Okay, this is wicked exciting. I just wanted to share it with everybody. Uh, my, uh, my, uh, I, I, I didn't have a, uh, an original fan for the Cadillac engine or an original pulley. I wound up having to buy a whole water pump. You can see the end of the water pump sticking out of here. I don't really need this. The water pump I got, I, th I think is probably fine. But I did need this because, you know, I didn't want to have a little aftermarket parts store fan stuck on my 50-year-old engine. I wanted the original fan, which is what this is. Uh, I love this thing. This is what all fans used to look like before they all, you know, nowadays fans are electric and they're plastic and they got a little electric motor and they go wee. Ain't like the old days. And here's the original pulley. Um, guy sold me the engine. I asked him if he had a pulley. He said, oh, any old Chevy pulley will fit it. Well, that's not true. I, it's not a, I couldn't find any old Chevy pulley anywhere that would fit it, but maybe there is some somewhere, but none of the ones I had would. So I have the original pulley and the original fan. I have a spare water pump. Um, if the weather's good this weekend, I'm going to have this on the car. Then I can put the radiator in place and uh, that, and then put the grill shell on there. And that just is going to look honking all by itself before I get any antifreeze in it. I am so excited. Woo wee! <laughs> have a nice day. I'm trying to puzzle this thing out, and it doesn't make any sense to me. It looks like. I mean, I would think this this bracket does fit the generator this way. It looks like it would maybe go about here. But if it did, I would put it right about here. And that just doesn't make sense. It would be, for one thing, this bracket would be sitting right on top of the spark plug. I mean, there's no way that could go there and that spark plug go there. For another thing, the generator would be... 
sitting right on top of the valve cover and there's no way that having it mounted there that this piece, which is supposed to be the original piece, can work. It just ain't right. I'm not even sure. Maybe it wasn't the right bracket for this car even though it was advertised as being so. What I'm thinking about doing is something else entirely. This is a regular old Chevy alternator. I'm thinking about putting it right down here and and mounting it, uh, building the amount that comes off the frame rather than off the motor. I know the motor is going to vibrate separate from the frame. I don't think the vibration would be so much that it would throw this thing out. If I put a if I put a a, a bracket off the frame down below and another one up here to adjust this with, I could pull this out, use it to tension my belt. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work just fine down here. Uh, it's smaller than the generator, so it's not going to take up so much space going back there. So I'm thinking that would be a, a workable way to go. And that's probably what I'll wind up doing. Uh, maybe there's something that I don't have that goes with these brackets. Like I say, these are supposed to be original equipment, but I have no idea how to make them work. I thought about it might look kind of cool to mount the thing right up here. But... Uh, you know, that would take a little figuring as to how to make that work. And But on the other hand, it, sometimes I think it does look kind of cool on these old cars to have the stuff sitting up on top, even though you don't have a blower, you know, have a big old generator sitting up there. I've seen that done before, and I've seen it look out, you know, turn out pretty well. But it would take some figuring to figure out how to make the brackets to make all that work. And I'm not altogether sure having the alternator down here but maybe multiple carburetors up here is just a better way because if you do have multiple carburetors you probably don't want a big old generator up there blocking up the view so there's all that man it's cold out here okay this is crazy exciting i didn't think it was going to happen today uh, i'd ordered a generator um for the hot rod and i got a few days off so i'm going to be working on it I knew it was in the mail, but I just didn't think it'd come this soon. Anyway, I just got back from the post office, and heavy as this box is, I'm thinking this must be it. So, we're going to take a look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Let's see. We have a generator bracket. Let me tilt that camera a little bit since you can see. Uh, I love technology, huh? Okay. We have a generator bracket. That should be pretty interesting. And we have, look at this. Holy oh, cow, that thing is heavy. We have a generator. Oh, and it has a crack in the wheel. Well, it has two cracks in the wheel. The wheel is broken. Oh, dang. They didn't tell me it was going to come broken. And we have the other little uh, pulley part, uh, uh, bracket part. Okay, so I heard my generator. I'm not too sure about the crack. Uh, I bet they broke that ship in it too. That's too bad. Oh, I think I think right stiff. Oh, there's the piece that broke off. Definitely needs to rebuild. We used to rebuild these things a lot when I was a boy. Not much to them. Okay, even if I don't use this uh, with these pieces. You know, I could with the mounting bracket parts, I could probably mount an alternator. Um, uh, so, you know, and the and the and the price I paid for this is less than what the brackets cost. So, can't lose. That's a good deal either way. Anyway, I'll be at work on that this weekend. Woohoo! Well, good <clears throat> good morning and welcome to Hot Rod Building at Ten Below, which is what it is today. Um, it is. I don't know if you can see out that window or not, but that's pretty much snow uh, and frosty glass and stuff. But, you know, I really want to work on this today, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to be out here anyway. I wanted to show you this. I got the right pulley from a hot rod. Uh, this is the correct catalyte pulley that lines up with the uh, shaft right there. And I've got the right fan with, with the right spacer. Um, that's got tape wrapped around it right now, but that will basically fit right here. The whole point of that being that once that is sitting there, I'll know where to set my radiator, which is what I'm going to try to do today. Uh, 
it's probably too cold to run the camera I might I was thinking about trying to do some like stop action pictures while I do the work and I might try that but I got a feeling my camera is going to freeze up so I thought I'd take a picture and show you what I'm intending to do see the, uh, the radiator needs to sit right there and and I needed the fan to be in place in order to know right where to sit the radiator it might be possible that I can take the spacer out and bring that fan a little closer to the engine that might give me a little bit more room. It'd be nice, I think, if I can sit it so that the radiator sits behind the cross member here in the front uh, with the idea that when I mount my grill shell here, um, I would like it to sit. Uh, I might have to cut the bottom of it a little bit there, but I would like it to sit kind of down in there a, a bit not right up on top of the cross member but just behind the cross member i don't know if it's going to work out that way or not but i'll uh i'll get started out here in a little bit and we'll see how that goes i also wanted to show you this um i did get the wheels out that i have for this and that's another thing i might try doing this weekend is uh maybe grind on them a little bit out here in the cold and take them in the house and paint them literally in the house, put some cardboard down or something, get them all painted up with a good coat of uh, Rust-Oleum or enamel or something uh, to keep the rust from happening. Uh, <clears throat> so that'll be my job. I, I'll, I'll shut this camera off and uh, and uh, go get my 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 warm gloves on, <laughs> and then we'll get to work on this, and I'll show what it looks like after a while. I've been out here studying the radiator setup. What I want to do is uh, have the radiator fall right in here. Uh, I, I want it to sit so that it'll sit just inside this thing right here. I might take a grinder and grind that down a little bit. Uh, I've studied a lot of different options. I've got this piece of angle iron here, which, you know, I think angle iron is ugly. And I could, you know, I thought about running a piece of angle iron all the way across where that thing's laying. But, uh, man, wouldn't that be ugly. Now, I also thought about, i got an old lawnmower blade here. I thought about flattening it out and you know, welding it across there, putting it under the radiator. My thinking originally was that if I had something underneath the radiator to protect it, that would be better. But I think what I'm going to try to do is use the bottom of that grill shell for that purpose rather than having the radiator sit completely on something. Uh, I dug these pieces of metal out of the basement, you know, with the idea of shaping something out of them. But what I finally ran across is these little gizmos. Uh, these are things that are made to mount a, a television antenna pole. Uh, you take two of them, you know. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take my grinder and grind this off so that this will sit down in here uh, like this, and then the ears on the bottom of that radiator are going to fall right on top of that. It's exactly the right size, uh, is that? And so when I take this little curly cube part off, I can either bolt this or weld this to the side of the frame, sit this right on top of that. I'll have the option of uh, putting a little insulation like a little piece of rubber between the two pieces of metal because I don't want it to be wearing on that aluminum. But I believe that's strong enough and I believe that would work fine. And that's what I'm going to do.
I'm about to knock off for today, but I did want to shoot a picture of this thing with the coffee can headlights. Uh, actually, they're plaster buckets. Um, and they're just up there for look's sake. <laughs> but uh, they do give me a, a good opportunity to see how she's going to look once the headlights are on there. And I think that's going to be just fine. Um, I've decided that before I go any further, I'm going to mount that generator. So that's going to be my task for in the morning. I've been studying on it. Uh, you can see right here, I... Uh, I actually began the idea of doing it, but what I discovered is that if I set the, the generator here, I don't know if you can see it from here or not, but the, the belt is going to hit the top of the uh, uh, neck of the, I can't think what that is, uh, thermostat housing. The way this is made, it's made for the belt to come under it. And if it comes under it, it will clear. This is where the, uh, the original generator used to sit. So in order for me to not get into that kind of problem, I need to either set the generator over here or maybe I can get away with setting it down there. I'm thinking of setting it over here, even though it's going to stick out the side of the motor. Uh, that might work best. But anyway, that's all stuff to worry about in the morning. And I'm, I'm too cold to work on anymore today, so I'm going to quit. But uh, tomorrow morning I'll get out here and we'll, we'll decide what we're going to do and take it from there. I just thought the... Uh, Plaster bucket headlights looks so cool. I'd have to make a little video so you can see it. Have a nice day. It's insanely cold today, which makes it really hard to work out in the shop. And I'm going to try to do it anyway. Uh, because I got the day off, you know, and I want to get things done. So, uh, this thermometer says it's 50, but that's just because the sun's shining on it. That way ain't true. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do today is this. Uh, I went to all the trouble the other day to cut these wrenches and make these little uh, rod radiator rod hangers the more I look at them the more I don't like them uh, nothing wrong with them it's just that I'm thinking that if I took them loose uh, from here and actually ran the rod right into this hole it would get them down a little lower and out of your eyesight so that your eye would kind of drift more toward the motor and away from these rods that are kind of sticking up a little bit so cold as it is that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to see if i can't reattach those and run them right into the firewall and do away with those little wrenches there and then we'll see how that looks okay i've made the change and i already like it better if you if you look that one over there has the wrench in place which makes it stick up a little bit over the cowl this cowl has actually a nice shape it's kind of nice and rounded off i actually like the looks I like the looks. One of the things I like about this car is the way that cowl is shaped and the way it has this little section that sort of comes down here and, and comes out at an angle. I just, I just like the looks of that. Later I'm going to clean all this junk off here. But 
by doing away with wrenches I brought this down a little lower which actually helps it when it gets over here to the oil spout because before I had to kind of pull on it a little bit to get the oil spout off but now it's not it's not close it's not touching uh, it's got a little bit of a little bit more forward pressure on the radiator which I want because you know if you think about it you put two or three gallons of water and something that's standing up like a tombstone you take off kick it hard it's going to try to come back into that fan so the whole point of having these rods is to keep that from happening and by getting them a little lower it just kind of lowers the whole makes the whole car look a little lower in the front which is which is what you want so anyway that's what i'm doing today on this frigid day uh and happy with the looks of it so far okay there it is it's done on both sides and yes i absolutely do like this better it just to me it's a much nicer look i've got the uh uh, uh, an air cleaner coming to go on that carburetor and uh, I think that's going to help the looks of it some too um, it'll get that that breather should sit at least as high as the top of the radiator shell if not a tad higher which would be good but I so much like these things they kind of disappear into the coil now instead of having those wrenches which drag your eye away okay this radiator shell is too fat and the headlight bars which are these things here are too low they should actually be right about here I'm thinking uh, and the whole thing's a bit too tall uh, I don't really think it should be taller than the car and the radiator isn't really taller than the car if you look here I can come down about an inch which is not much trouble to chop it down an inch but bringing it in, if you see on either side of my radiator, this is where the uh, where the, the, the radiator tabs are to attach to this thing. There's about two inches on each side of this thing. My thinking is if I split the thing down the middle, take four inches out, in the process of doing that, take that, uh, that light bar, headlight bar out, raise it up about five or six inches, Put it all back together, weld it back together, uh, chop it down about an inch. I think that's going to make it perfect. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, I've split it half in two and I've also cut it down. <clears throat> you can see that it, it comes right up to the tabs on the side of the radiator. And up front here, that comes just about to the center. And even already, I can tell I'm going to like this better. Um, it, when that big old radiator was hanging out over the frame rails, that just looked wrong to me. So I got to cut down the other side and weld it all back together. But I think it's going to give me exactly what I want. I think I'm going to be perfectly happy with that. Okay, this is it. Kind of roughed out. Uh, I will uh, shoot a couple of bolts through these uh, headlight hangers which is exactly what it originally had, and that gives a little extra strength to the whole thing. But as you can see now, it fits better. It sort of uh, uh, is snug up to the radiator, which is what I wanted. I want this thing to protect the radiator, but I also want it to look half decent. I didn't like it looking all that huge. And if you notice, it comes right up to the tabs on each side. should be fairly easy to drill that out and bolt that right into these little tabs on either side of here. Um, I've stitched the front together with a little bit of wire that's rough right now. When I take it apart to drill my holes for my light hinges, I'll, uh, I'll stitch it from the inside. That'll be a little prettier. I could still drop it down a hair, but I'm not going to. I think I'm going to call that good enough because uh, it's sitting on there about the way it wants to sit. Uh, it might not hurt to trim right in here. It might. I don't know. It might not even matter. I think I'm going to uh, bolt it together, wire it up good, put it on there, set my hinges, and call it call it done, and then get to work on my rods. There's that. Well, good morning. Let's talk rat rods. Today's project is going to be to um, attach the rod that braces up the grill shell. <laughs> Uh, 
I got an abundance of old wrenches that are kind of aftermarket off brand wrenches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this wrench off, set it right here, uh, get the angle right, bolt it right to that, and then attach my rod to the wrench itself. Okay, this is the final shot of it today. Um, it's all finished, and it's kind of funny. Uh, on, a, on a car like this, the lines mean everything. I had these two rods here, and I had them raised up a bit higher, and for some reason I was just really not happy with it, and I just took, and, took my hand and put it right here and just shoved them both down about an inch and a half. And for some reason now, it just looks right to me, and I think it's because the line uh, comes right along the same direction as I feel the line of the card comes it rises up as it needs to to meet the radiator but basically the line that meets your eye is the right line for the car so I'm altogether happy with that um, and so that's it for that project I'll start another one now after I clean up a bit things have gotten a little out of hand around here so I gotta put everything back in its place and I can start again and do something else but I just wanted to show how that turned out. Everybody have a nice day. Thank you. I'm thinking about pulling these headers off next. I've got some, uh, I got some baffles to go in the end of them. Motorcycle baffles, which should knock the noise down a little bit so that if I'm out driving this on the street, the police won't be quite so prone to come chase me down and arrest me. I'm sure if I was driving with open pipes, they'd probably frown on that. And of course, these are removable. Pop this little screw out and take the whole thing out of there if you want to blow some fire. And uh, I'm thinking I might just pull these things off, put it right up on the drill press to drill that. It'd be a lot easier than trying to drill upside down. So. <laughs>
1.30. I was laying there in the bed thinking about how to make all this work. Um, and I just decided, heck with it. I got up and I got started. So about 2 a.m. I was out here working on this. And this is what I've come up with. And I, I'll be honest with you, I like it. I've got one bolt here, which is the main rod. This has been bolted and welded. I've got brace that bolts into the block here that braces up that. That's also bolted and welded. I've got a top uh, piece that comes over and welds to the whole thing. So there's three separate rods on three separate bolts uh, with, a, with a, a thing on the front and the back for the alternator and a place for me to stick my rod in here and do that little motion that you need to do to, to yank it out. Down here I needed a 12-inch uh, a piece of steel and I couldn't locate one this morning. I had this old wrench that's uh, junk. So, heck, I used it. You know, I think it's kind of cool sitting there. Um, you know, the thing sticks out and it's kind of ugly, so the wrench kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. I took the radiator off before I cranked it, just in case the fan went flying or the belt flew off. Uh, those old pulleys are pretty, you know, bent up and stuff. I tried to straighten them out a little bit with a pair of pliers, but... Uh, they seem to be good. I just cranked it. Let's see if it'll start right up if I have to play. It. Woo! It's fire. Stop that. Did you run good? Uh, I think it's okay. I believe that's good enough. I suppose the next thing I could do is ride over and get me some hoses and put the radiator back on there. But uh, I've been at this. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. I've been at this since 2 a.m. I've already put seven hours in this thing this morning already. I think I'll go in and warm up. Another thing I'm liking about this car a lot is uh, this dash layout. This is, uh, I believe it's a 28 Dodge dash that uh, is in this. And I found some gauges looking through all my junk. Uh, I found enough gauges to do everything I needed to do here, so that's one of the things on my list is to get the gauges in the dash, get them all hooked to the motor. That way once I get the motor plumbed and crank it, I can uh, kind of study on the gauges and see what she's doing, so I'm feeling pretty happy about that. Uh, I've, I'm also starting to get my lights in. I ordered a, I actually ordered lights rather than trying to fix up old lights because to be honest with you, nowadays Unless you got them laying around, if you have to go out and buy a set of old lights and then fix them up on top of that, you're just going to spend more money than if you go out and buy something like this. Uh, and I, I really like the looks of this. This is uh, something I got on eBay. It's a blue dot tail light. When I was a kid, I remember seeing a 44 go down the road with a set of blue dots. When he hit the brakes, that little purple light came on, and I thought, wow, that's just the coolest thing ever. These lights here, I have no idea what they are. These look almost like heating elements or something in here um, I believe this is probably made for some particular light but it's got a little separation where maybe the two light bulbs would have gone maybe there was a lens that fit that but to save my soul I have no idea what kind of light I'd have to find to fit that so I guess what I'm going to wind up doing is just welding over this making it flat and then taking these blue dots and you know setting them back here somewhere uh, on my back corner maybe I'll get them kind of low there and out to the edge that's the way I'm thinking on that uh, got some real headlights coming and a, and a fuse block I looked through my boxes of junk the other day see if I had an old uh, an old fuse system I, I didn't so I went ahead and went ahead and ordered one it didn't cost but three or four bucks to get a fuse block and on this car you know all you're gonna have is some lights and the, well I mean there's, there's no heater there's no radio I, I, not a whole lot of wiring to be done, so all it takes is a few fuses, and uh, it should be good enough. 
Um, I'm excited about everything. Sometimes I can't figure out what to do next because I want to do it all at once. But uh, patience, patience, it'll all come. It'll all happen. It is moving along at a good rate. So anyway, that's where I'm at so far today. Oh, this is wicked cool. My headlights came today. Um, I'm going to show it. I'm going to show you what I got for the hot rod. Uh, these are not new, but they are complete workable uh, Deeks headlights. Um, and this is going to be honking. I'm going to go put them on the car. Um, I considered. I saw uh, as I was looking for some. I saw. Like a set of 36 Chevy headlights that needed to be completely reworked, and they were about four or five times more expensive than these are. Whereas with these, I've got a whole headlight, it's working, it's ready to go. All I got to do is mount it and hook it up. So, you know, for the money, and right now money is an issue. I mean, let's face it. Uh, and also on my car, I don't need to put weird old stuff on my car because it's already a weird old stuff kind of car. If it has a decent set of headlights, that's not going to throw off on any of the hot rottiness of it or anything like that. In fact, I think you just add to it. So I'm kind of excited about these. I'm just going to run right out and put them right on, and then we'll see how it looks with the headlights on it. That will be wicked fun. Okay, I've got the headlights on there. Hey, that's the kind of stuff that dreams are made out of right there. Look at that. That is so cool looking. Ah! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love it. Okay, this might be worth looking at. These headlights, even though the bolt is tight, tend to flop around on here a bit uh, so what I've done is I've cut me a little piece of a uh, rubber hose here's one that's gonna go over here and a good size washer and I'm gonna put that on there with that rubber hose so this rubber hose will come up underneath that and give it some friction of that light hopefully it'll kind of lock it in place and insulate a little bit too I'll try that we'll see if it works Okay, I got the baffles in there, but I tell you, she's still wicked loud. I probably couldn't get away with driving this on the street very far. First time a cop hits me, go by, I'll be done for. I did tighten up my headlights a little bit. I'm thinking that if I'm ever going to do any serious night driving, I might need to build me a brace down here to brace my headlights up because they're only going to be as sturdy as the radiator is so it's always going to be a little bit of flop there of course it might be either way I also notice this alternator is kind of jiggling a little bit when she runs her up so probably what I'm going to do there's a broke off head bolt here that I'm not going to drill out uh, head doesn't seem to be leaking but I think I could use that as a pen stick a pen down in there and uh, come up with another brace on the back side of this Keep that from vibrating a little bit more. That might work out good. That's something for me to consider.
know if that's any better or not. Still plenty loud. Sounds about like an old Ford tractor to me. I don't know. Hard to get away with that. Maybe it'll sound better when I get some gaskets on it. We'll see. Okay then. Uh, I uh, got my radiator hoses hooked up. Uh, I, I bought a, uh, a radiator cap off a pickup truck because I couldn't find one at the local hardware store and I didn't want to go all the way out to the parts store to get one. Um, radiator's plumbed up and, uh, and antifreezed up and uh, raring to go there. Uh, I, uh, I made me an overflow bottle out of this Coke bottle. I, I just kind of like that better than, uh, I know a lot of rat riders are using beer cans nowadays, but if, you know if everybody's doing it, it takes a specialist sort of off it, so. I figured I'd use this old green Coke, Coke bottle. It's kind of, it's kind of the right thing for this car. That that bottle could have been around when this car was on the road. So, let me see. I got my altern alternator hooked up and wired up good. That's raring to go, and uh, that turned out real nice. I uh, I got my, uh, uh, I used the original sending unit for my temperature gauge. Uh, there's also an old electronic sending unit for an oil pressure gauge down in there which I couldn't get out, but there was a place right next to it for a, a secondary opening, which I was able to run this plastic hose for my newfangled uh, oil pressure gauge. I don't like this. I don't like plastic hoses, and I don't like aftermarket gauges, but, you know, these are things I picked up at yard sales and stuff, so, I mean, I can't complain too much. I, I didn't want to spend the money to go out and buy a brandy brand new one. Uh, I've done a bit of wiring. Let me show you. I put my fuse block... Uh, I put my fuse block back in the back corner over there. Uh, eventually, there's going to be a seat right here. There'll probably be a gas tank over here. I didn't want to put the fuse block up under the dash and have to crawl up under there when I had to change the fuse. I like the idea a lot better of flipping the seat forward and being able to reach right in there and change my fuses. I didn't need much of a fuse block for this thing, you know, because there ain't that much going on here, I mean, uh, electrically wise. So, uh, let's see. That about sums it up. Let's see if she'll crank. Yeah, she's running. Uh, you don't have a boat load of oil pressure, but you got some, you know. I mean, that, that ain't bad. I, I've driven cars with a lot less oil pressure than that for a long time. things I notice is if I stay out here very long and do that, even as drafty as this whole barn is, <laughs> these fumes start to get to me, give me a little bit of a headache. I think I'll, uh, I'll go on in and let the fumes thin out. I could pop a few windows out of here, but I ain't going to be running it all that much. Anyway, I just wanted to show that off so my boy can see it and everything. Uh, I am liking it as much as ever. It ain't going to be long now, I'm thinking, before I'm going to be popping these hubs off and Change the front brakes out, uh, rework the back brakes, then I'll be ready to run some lines and then figure out some pedals for this old girl. I guess once I get all that done, it'll be time to hook up the drive shaft and see if she'll roll. Coming along pretty good. I think I'll be done before springtime.
I need to clean up some tools around here, but I don't know. Maybe I'll let the fumes die down first. Y'all have a nice day. I just want to show that. Bye. Okay, there they are. They're all done now. Painted up to exacting and precise paint specifications. And I'll let them dry for a day or two and uh, I'll mount them up on the old girl. We'll see how, how they look. Uh, I think that's just honking. Well, I guess this is pretty bad, but it just illustrates the kind of person I am. Uh, I'm selling my furniture to buy tires for the hot rod. Uh, this furniture came from my folks, and it's lovely. It's completely unlike me in my house. I mean, here's a good example. This is my normal way of being. I've got a, a four-barrel carburetor on a table in here that I'm rebuilding. It's hard to mix this kind of lifestyle with that kind of lifestyle, so I found some people that wanted a nice set of furniture. I'm going to sell it to them and buy me some 16-inch uh, rubber to go on the spoke wheels for the hot rod. I mean, you know, it, it just goes to show you some folks are like that. I guess that would be me. Uh, hot rod outlaw sells mom's furniture to buy parts for his rat rod. Yeah. <laughs> Have a nice day. Yeehaw! They're here. The tires are here. Look, 16 inches, big rubber. Holy cow, this is going to be great. I can't wait. Gonna be a good day. One of my next projects is gonna be to get these. Well, I, I gotta. I'm gonna change the uh, brakes on the hot rod over to uh, disc brakes. I'm gonna put some adapters on it and mount these wheels. With these are 34 Ford wheels, 16 inch. I got some 16 inch uh, rubbers coming. I'm going to stretch them on there by hand. If you look at these right close, you can see they're pretty pretty uh, pitted and stuff. Some of these over here are in a little better shape. They still got some paint on them. Uh, what I'm going to try to do today is just clean them up. Uh, I'm doing it the hard way with a wire brush. Uh, I've got a little grinder over here with a little brush action, and that helps some. But, you know, basically what I'm using is brushes like this. Uh, which works good for getting in between these spokes and you know like this and like uh, I got a little toothbrushy thing here to get down in there it's going to take a good bit of work but it's good work um, after I get them painted I'll take them in the house and let them warm up and paint them inside and then I'm going to sit them, uh, sit them uh, around by the wood stove and just let them sit for a few days so that they can be sitting there and let the paint get hard while I'm doing the brakes on the front of the car because uh, I want the paint to be good and hard when I start putting the tires on there I'm going to beat the crap out of them and you know if the paint's not hard it's just going to knock it right off so that's kind of the plan for today I'm working on this <laughs> Okay, I've got the grinding done, uh, so I'm just going to kind of have a nice little relaxed sit down here and paint me some wheels. Uh, when I get through with them, I'll sit them kind of over there, sort of near the stove, and let them just sit for a few days while I work on other stuff. And then, uh, and then after they get good and dry and I get everything else ready, I'll, uh, I'll mount some up. <laughs>
Okay, I'll do a little before and after. This is the wheels after they've been ground and before they've been painted. And this is the wheels after they've been painted. Now this paint is uh, free paint. It was at the hardware store. They had a five gallon bucket of it and it had a hole in the bottom. So they flipped it upside down and set it on the front porch and put a free sign on it. You can't beat that. Uh, I'm not sure what the final color is going to be. I wanted to put this on there to coat everything down real good inside and out. And, you know, I think it looks pretty good. And I'm also thinking, you know, that color there might be just fine. I don't know. Anyway, I've got three more to go. I'm not going to film it all because you guys will get sick of watching me paint wheels. But uh, I figure that one's good enough to show the progress and uh, good enough to show what an amazing thing a little coat of paint can do. Y'all have a nice day. Okay, there they are, all done with the final coat on them. I think they're going to look honking good on that old girl. Can't hardly wait. Getting exciting. Hoo wee! This is worth taking a look at. Uh, this is going to be an incredibly easy change over here. Uh, this piece goes on right there. The disc is going to mount to that. And that's going to be pretty much a piece of cake. Not the disc, but the, you know, the rotor will mount here and the disc will go right on there. That's going to be easy. I, I will say this. Uh, kits for these old Ford axles are cheap. There's a bunch of people making them, I guess. And they're not terribly expensive. Uh, I put a kit on the front of my Rambler and that cost me an arm and leg. So, I mean, it's really quite a bargain to do this. And uh, I think I recommend it. Okay, this is uh, what we're talking about. If somebody tries one of these kits, I might not be able to figure it out. But this is a 44 front axle, supposedly. And obviously those are 39 uh, hubs. In my kit here, I've got... Uh, a thing that was marked as a 48 spindle adapter. When I go to put this thing together, if I put it together without the adapter, this bearing doesn't fit well. But with the adapter, and what I've done is I've measured to make sure this fits right onto that. Uh, and the distance, once I get this pressed on here, is about right for it to fit middle ways in the uh, caliper. And the distance between here and here is uh, three inches from the back of this to three inches to the front of this, which once I get this pressed on here, that's going to be correct. So, my thinking is it must be a, uh, a 48 spindle. Now, how they got the 39 hub on the 48 spindle, I'm figuring they just changed the bearings. They probably... They probably probably possible to get a bearing that works between the two and I'm thinking that's what they did. The reason I'm concerned about all this is once I get this on there it's not going to come off easily. It looks like it's quite a tight little press and I'm going to sand this a bit and you know kind of probably very gently sort of tap that on there. But I didn't want to do it unless I was pretty sure it was the right way to go because you know once you get that on there you'd have a devil of a time getting it back off. So I thought I'd show that because somebody else might be working on one of these kits and trying to figure out how it works and Maybe if you saw that, it'd give you a little head start. Okay, I've determined that I was right. This does require that piece to be in there, that 48 Ford piece. The uh, way I figured it out was I put the wheel on without it, and there's no way it's going to fit. This is actually going on here real nice once I got it figured out. Uh, basically, what I did was I put that little press-on bearing on there. I put the, uh, the two little bearings inside the wheel here. No grease or no uh, you know grease caps or anything. And then I'm just kind of gently tightening this, which is pushing it on. I don't want to mess up the bearing. I don't want to put too much pressure on that. Um, but it, it's kind of just, you can tell it's not straining too much, but it is easing that thing right up into place, which is what I want to see happen. So what's going to happen next is uh, this is going to fit in here. Let's see. I'll get that right. Okay, this is of interest. Uh, I remember, I might have had some instructions that came with all this that I lost or something, I don't know. But I remember reading somewhere that this might require a little touch of grinding to make it work. And uh, and right here is where the grinding needs to happen. Uh, you see this big circle right here and the old 
old spindle that's kind of sticking out into that. Well, what happens is when I fit this brake caliper into place, it goes right up in there and it hits that. Can you see that? So what I need to do is grind that out of there. Once I grind that out of there, it's going to fit perfectly and it's all going to be just right. You can see here that I do have that little uh, shim on here and the bearing fits on it just right. This is pretty snug. I can probably snug that up a little bit more, but I didn't want to do it until I was kind of ready. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark this. I'm going to get my grinder out and grind that little section away and then put it all back together. And after that, it should just fall together like a piece of cake. Okay, this is wicked exciting. My uh, my tires came. Uh, these somebody pointed out that these are Harley Davidson motorcycle tires that are on here, and they're exactly right. And I wanted uh, I wanted the tires to be a good bit taller. And they are. This is going to get the front end of the car up a little bit, which I need because right now the car is so close to ground that the steering boss would drag if I went over much of a bump. Uh, I also got my wire wheels painted and I got my adapters. And uh, over here I've got my uh, my disc brake set up, which I'm going to be installing today. So that, that's really good progress. I mean, uh, when I get those disc brakes on there and get these wheels on there and get these things mounted, I'm going to mount these uh, tires by hand. Uh, holy cow, that's going to start to look just great. So that's what I'm up to today. I thought I'd shoot that, especially since I sold mom's furniture to get these tires. I felt like I'll let everybody at least see the tires. Thanks. Have a nice day. All right, let's talk a little bit about what I'm about to do. These are the... Uh, wheels that are on the rat rod right now and you know to be honest with you they are very cool these are like 39 ford hydraulic brake wheels with that old style uh i think they call that uh what do they call those wheels they had a particular name for them which slips my mind at the moment but these were the first of the juice brake uh hubs and uh you know they've got some value of their own However, they are shoe brakes, and you know, here's the bottom line. I learned how to drive on a car with shoe brakes, and I spent a good part of my life driving around on cars with shoe brakes, and the thing about shoe brakes is it's awful hard to get them adjusted exactly right so they don't pull one way or the other. And with this car being what it is, you know, it's got this old uh, 57 Ford steering column. It's already got a boatload of play in it. That's all I need is for the brakes to be zigging and zagging me around every which way every time I try to stop. So for that reason, I've elected to go with the disc brakes. It's just the older I get, the more I care about my own safety. So these are coming off. The disc brakes are going on. That's going to be the project for today. I will save these. They might be uh, good for some other application down the road. Or somebody else might like to have them more than me. Who knows? But, uh, but they're, they're going. So anyway, I just thought I'd show that and explain why I'm doing it. Because sure as well, there'll be people out there saying, Oh, you should have kept them brakes. And you know what? If they want them, I'll sell them to them. <laughs> okay, here's a pretty good opportunity to take a look at what we had as opposed to what we're going to have. These old shoe brakes have nothing on them. They're completely gone. These old cylinders are uh, all dried out to the point where the rubber is just falling out of them. This can all be fixed. Uh, it's kind of like a friend of mine said, all it takes is time and money. I guess I figured for my time and money the disc brakes just something much better setup then I'm going to take this off there's four bolts that are going to hold this on I'm going to pop them four bolts off and then that'll be the start of where we'll begin to put the disc brakes back on it's going to be a good project All right, I just thought I'd share a little bit of this. I am uh, mixing up the color to paint my wheels. I've got a can. Uh, I went out and bought me some store-bought store -bought paint for this part. I got me a can of yellow Rust-Oleum and a can of green Rust-Oleum. And what I did is, did is I, I put this down in the bottom of a tofu tray. And uh, what I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of playing with the color. I'm taking out about a spoonful at a time. I'm putting it into a tray full of yellow paint. And mixing it up here 
And as I go along, I'm, 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 no, I got in my mind what I want for a color, but I don't know exactly how much of what it takes to make that color. So I'm, I'm just using about enough here to experiment with. If I, if I come up with a color that I really like, and I sort of figure out the uh, ratio of, oh, I just dropped my nail down in there. Well, that's going to make it awful hard to mix with, with the nail all covered with paint. And <laughs> good for me, I got another one. Anyway, uh, once I get my color about right, I'll mix me up about a mayonnaise jar full of it and I'll paint up in wheels. They'll look plum honking. Okay, I found myself in need of a bigger mixing implement here. So I, I, I went and got this uh, Amish potato salad thing. And I think that's going to work. Let's see. Boy, I really ought to have a newspaper down here for this. I think. Here's the deal. I, I'm thinking about taking this green and pouring it in this yellow paint right here with the idea that I believe that will come out to about this color here which I think I like pretty much if that makes any sense. It's a little bit reckless because if it don't work I can't go back and take it out but I like being reckless. That's what it's all about, right? Right. So here we go. Here we go. Hold your breath now. This is going to get sloppy. Now, don't be afraid. This is not for the weak heart. Oh, you guys ain't even in the picture here. Let me move the camera around. You got to see this because this is the important part. One, two, three, splash. There we go. We're mixing it up. It's kind of like witch's brew. I like this. Whee! Never knew being a hot rodder could be so much fun. Okay, I found myself in need of a bigger mixing implement here. So I, I, I went and got this uh, Amish potato salad thing. And I think that's going to work. Let's see. Boy, I really ought to have a newspaper down here for this. Okay, I have newspaperized my table. I got my Amish potato salad bowl, and I'm gonna I'm gonna transmigrate these here paint containers into something more along these lines. I think what I'm gonna do is take all of this and put it in there, and take all of this and put it in there, and then I'm gonna keep adding green till I get the color I want. That's the plan. Here we go. I suppose y'all could watch this part. This is probably the best part because it's probably going to be the sloppiest. Yeah. Okay, let's have some fun with this. Whee! Okay, there's my spoon. I don't think I'll be eating any more potato salad with that spoon. Here we go now. We're going to put the paint in. This should be fun. Yeah, watch this. Whee! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm liking that. It might take a while. It might take a while for this part to get finished up. And since I ain't got no hands to stop the camera, y'all just going to have to watch till this thing gets through dripping. All right, we're making progress. We're making huge progress here. This is coming along at a great, at a great uh, rate here. I'm pouring this in here because this was my test. You know, you can tell that I'm doing this in a very scientific manner. I have to have the exact... There's a nail. I got to get that nail out of there. I got to have exact proportions so that I get the precise color for my wheels because I can't have anything but perfection here because I am a rat rotter by Gary. Wee doggies. Well, that's coming along pretty good there. Yeah, I'll bring it over here so y'all can see that. Oops, I'm getting paint on my camera. Dang, it's a good thing I'm not fussy. See there? I like that. It's making you. Making you wish you had some, ain't it? Okay, I'll put some more. I'll put some more of this in it. There we go. A little bit of this. Oh, yeah, that's pre very precise measurements. Now we've got to get just the right amount. Wouldn't drop too much, it'd be the wrong color. Whee! Oh, yeah, that's coming along good. Here, let me get this over here so you can see that. That's downright psychedelic. Psychedelic, yes, sir. It's your downright psychedelic. Okay then. See, I have the paint meister here helping me, the master paint technician. Let me get her on video so you can see her, her who she is. She's telling me it needs to be a little bit darker. I'm, I got my doubts, but I'm going to trust her judgment because she's a professional. So here we'll splash in a little bit more. Hold on to your breath now. There you go. Hold your nose. Okay, it's good. Uh, okay, we can't make it any lighter, so if we get it too dark, we're just stuck with it. Let's right, see how that's going to look. Well, I have to admit, that is one honking fine color for a set of spoke wheels right there. Let's take a look at that. 
I don't know if you can get the exact texture and flavor of that, but man, I think that's looking honking. I think I'm going to nail it down right there. Put the lid on the potato salad can and call it done. Okay, this is what I'm up to today. Um, see how this grill shell comes down that just ends and it kind of hovers over the frame? This is the uh, the part that I cut off the bottom of it right here. Um, and it's really made in a cool kind of way. Uh, this was two pieces of metal that have been cut and pulled together and then riveted back together to form that little V shape which I like and I'm probably going to lose. But what I'm thinking of doing is uh, cutting this thing down the same width as the piece that I took out of the original radiator and trying to fit it back in below there so that rather than that radiator just looking the way it looks, which is what it is, it looks like a radiator sitting on a couple pieces of metal sitting on top of the frame. If I can incorporate this down into the bottom part of it, even though I have to trim it around that frame rail there, I just think it'd look a lot nicer. And, you know, to be honest with you, I don't have that much else to do today. I think I'll work on that. So we'll see how it comes out. One of the things I love about this kind of hot rodding is that, you, you know, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want to do. It's your car. <laughs> uh, check this out. Uh, this is half of that piece I was I was holding in my hand a while ago. Now, without this piece, uh, you can see that it's just a kind of, it just like this just stops here. But if I can integrate this into here, and, and I trimmed it a little bit right here to miss my my spring shackle bolts, 
you can see where it covers up the hole where these headlights used to come out. If I can make this corner fit by rebending that and, and kind of cupping that in there and sitting it like that, I just think it's going to be a lot better look. It's kind of uh, it's kind of goofball body work, but you know what? Goofball body work is a little bit of what this is all about. Looks like I'm going to have to do a little cutting over here on this side to fit it in. Uh, but heck, I can. I can do that because it's, it's my car and I'm big and I can do what I want to. <laughs> Okay, I'll point out a little point of interest here. What I'm doing looks pretty shabby on the one hand, but on the other hand, what you might not realize on this old grill shell, this grill shell has actually been remade before. This right here is the same metal as this down here. This is a piece of galvanized tin. Someone made the bottom of this out of this piece of galvanized tin. This is probably the old original grill shell right here. And then somebody made this whole little bottom piece out of that galvanized tin. So what I'm doing by shortening it and uh, reshaping it and putting it back together is not not really any worse than what's already been done to it. And it's not like I'm, you know, disgracing a valuable antique or anything like that. And my thinking is that I'm liking the way this is looking. Uh, you know, the way it's coming together here. Uh, I just like it better on this side once I get it all tightened up a lot better than like over here where it's all up in the air. So that's what I'm progressing to do is to, I'm going to try to bend this up a little bit more and then pop a few rivets in it or something like that. And I think that'll just about look pretty honking. What I did here is I shot me a little tack screw into this corner to pull this corner down and get it into place. I'm uh, probably going to replace that with a rivet. But it, it kind of gets it about where I need it to be. And uh, keep in mind, I'm not shooting for perfection here, you know. It's a, it's a hot rod. So, but uh, tack screws are wonderful things. If, you don't, if you're not familiar with them, you, you, ought to, you ought to go out and buy yourself a bunch of them and start messing around with them because they're wicked fun. When we had the race car, we used to tack screw fenders on and off at random, at will. It was wicked fun. Anyway, uh, yeah, I like this. I like this a lot better than I like this. So that's where we're going. All right, this is on here pretty good. It's not, uh, I'm not through with it. What I'm going to do is take that whole thing off. Uh, take it off the radiator and put me some tech screws on there and stitch up that little bit of cloth a little bit more. You know, where it's off the radiator so I don't have to worry about poking holes in it and stuff. But, man, I just like that look get a little distance on it. I just like that look so much better. As imperfect as it is, it's better than it was. It's working for me. And that's what really matters. When I was a kid, I went to a rod run one time. I'd been up all night long, all week long, all weekend long, trying to put a, a 39 Ford pickup truck back together. And barely got it together good enough to go to a car show. This guy parked next to me had a Ten thousand dollar twenty six Chrysler he had restored. Ten thousand dollars in those days was like a hundred grand. There was just no way I could keep up, and it made me kind of, ah, uh, kind of put me off the whole hot rod thing. So for me to be building this car, just like I want to on low bucks out of old parts, that's perfect. I mean, it couldn't get any perfect. It's the perfect place to be after kind of be, getting put off hot rodding by folks that just got too much money to spend. Anyway, there's all that. Have a nice day. Okay, I'm done for the day. Uh, I got to clean up out here, but the radiator's done. Now, this thing comes up underneath and, and goes back up on both sides. Uh, looks pretty rough, but that's nothing unusual for this car. I'm pleased with it. Uh, that's what I spent the day doing. Uh, I guess it's time to go in and warm up and have some supper. Y'all have a nice day.
What I'm going to do now is a little bit of at-home shade tree body work. Uh, these wheels, two of these wheels were better than the other because they had more paint on them and I want to put the better wheels on the front. But this particular one's got a couple of pretty serious dents in it right here. And I'm going to attempt to take them out by reaching through from the back side and putting this uh, ratchet extension right on the top lip of the dent and pounding it with a hammer. Something like this. Getting better already. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use this pair of pliers here to reach down and uh, see. I don't know if this metal is flimsy enough to allow me to do this or not, but just see if I can grab that and lift the dent up. That would be a no. Uh, one thing you can do if you got some hammers like this in body work is you can put the hammer head right on there and hit the other end of it. That way you're not actually hitting the metal. That kind of helps. And that's sort of what these round-headed things are made for. A lot of times you're working body work and you, I got a bunch of different size hammers. You can use these round-headed things to you know, put this up, up against where you want to curve and hit it like that. I've got a collection of hammers out there. I'm not really a body man, but I've, I bought all the interestingly shaped hammers I could find with the idea of trying to do some body work. This wheel is pretty bent up and I'm going to kind of make a mess of it hammering on it, but uh, it, it'll be easy enough to repaint if I can get the dent out of it. And that's uh, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. I'd rather do this now than have it on the car. There's a pretty good opportunity to smash a finger when the process of this. you got to be right careful. That's actually coming out pretty good that way. Yeah, look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. We'll take a little of this on this side. Give it a little bit of this kind of action. Oh, that's looking good. Okay, I'm done. I, like I said, I scuffed it up a little bit. But the circle is nice and straight and it's not, it doesn't have those big jagged dents in it. Uh, eventually I'm going to get me some V8 hubcaps and they're going to need to fit on here. So what I'll do is uh, I'm probably going to be mounting this wheel here today. So I'll go ahead and get it mounted up, then I'll take my paint and I'll do a little touch up on that part that I hammered on. Sure look good then. Well, I've got some really big news. Um, I have located a four-speed transmission connected to an old bell housing that will bolt to this uh, Cadillac engine, which will allow me to hook a four-speed to this. And I've also located a, uh, a, a Cadillac flywheel and... Uh, so what I'm going to need to do is get this Dynaflow out of here and match up the uh, the new transmission and everything to this engine. I don't have the transmission yet. It's it's being shipped. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to need to, I, I, I would like to be right down in there where this coil of the car is sitting right now. And my thinking is it might be the right time to lift the body off this thing. I don't think it's going to be terribly hard to do. It look, looks like there's a, about four screws holding it on. Uh, there's one right there and there's one up under there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And back here on the back, uh, it looks like the body's just sitting on the frame there. I don't think it's even connected, which might be a good thing to do once I do get this off is to kind of manufacture a way to connect all that up. I, I believe this body was actually built right on the frame. Uh, you know, as far as the, the truck cab goes, it's pretty much sits down on here. Uh, the guy that had this before me fabricated this, and he actually made this part back here um, out of an old 57 Ford hood. 
uh, this part of the turtle deck that turns in where you have this crease this is a this is the front of a 57 Ford hood right here it makes a nice little crease and that works out really well I'm thinking that in order to lift the body off obviously I'm going to move the, the battery and the gas can you know out of here and, and take my uh, wiring block loose and pull my wiring off I believe I can take these bolts out up here lift the front of the body and slide that back because that sits up in there kind of tucks up in the back of the frame rail so I believe if I slide the body back uh, it will allow me to kind of pick the front end up and then roll the frame out from under it one of the problems I have is that this steering column goes through the firewall and there is no break between it and the steering box except this uh, this little U-joint uh, which I, I don't know if you could take that apart or not but I'm thinking probably what I'll wind up doing is just leaving the steering thing right here making a little cut in my firewall so that I can lift the body up and let the steering stay right here with the car that's one of my thoughts the other thought is to uh, unbolt the steering box and let the steering box and everything come out with the car that may be where I start is sort of studying on that because I need to I need to study the steering box anyway and figure out if there's anything I can do to tighten it up because right now it's it's pretty un ungrate. <laughs> so anyway, that's where I'm at this morning. I'm I'm considering all these all these things and we'll see where I wind up. Alrighty, I thought I'd do a little walk around this morning and uh, just kind of take stock of everything. Uh, I've got the wheels on here and uh, I think they're looking pretty honking. Uh, it did raise the front end up a bit which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad thing because you always want a nice low look, but if you look up under here, you'll see that steering box arm hanging down pretty low. That's got to be heated and bent up some, but even doing that, it's still, that box is pretty close to the ground. You also see that big cross member up under the transmission there. Well, that's got to go too. I get rid of those two things. I might could come down a little bit and I could adjust this front end down but you know in reality the way it sits ain't bad it's a good practical height for main roads right now I got 15 inch uh, 60s tires on the back literally these tires were made in the 60s and uh, that's good rubber back there but if I if I put uh, this is a 600 16 if I put a 750 16 on the back there it's going to raise the back up so that the whole car will kind of sit in proportion it might sit a little high as far as road clearance and all but it'll have that kind of slanted down in the front look which would be just about right of course i ain't going to buy them tires anytime soon because i need uh i need other stuff i need kingpins and bushings i need rod ends for all my steering rods here in the front uh, i'm thinking about trying to change that transmission because i don't really want to run that dyna flow uh my steering box here has got uh my more than half around to play and a warped shaft before it even moves the the tires so that's got to be addressed i've either got to fix that myself or find somebody that can fix it uh i know that you can take them boxes apart and and uh, you can do some adjusting on them but i don't know if you can do that much adjusting um i'm also thinking today about remaking my header baffles because these things are so loud right now if i drove this thing down the street the first cop it heard me it pulled me over and arrested me of course i wouldn't be able to hear it because i'd be deaf from all the noise i guess the other thing i'm thinking about doing today is uh i got a carburetor in this parts washer here that i would pull out and put back together and it's a nice it's a wicked cold day so it'd be a good day to work inside on that so anyway that's where we're at i just wanted to you know to, to show it and uh talk about it a little bit one of the things i've come to realize is i don't have much of a turning circle on this car uh even with it turned as hard about as hard as you can turn it and right now that's about as far as i can get it to go <laughs> it ain't going to be much of a turning circle and in reality if you look this tire is getting somewhat close to the end of the radius rod there so you know she's not gonna she's not gonna be the kind of car you're gonna well i guess i could kick the tires loose in the rear and spin it around that way that might be how i wind up having to negotiate my way through life in the old girl but heck still i'm liking it i'm liking it real good this is crazy but i'm a little crazy too so i'm gonna try it uh 
I was looking at various and sundry different ways that people do baffles on the internet. And one place was recommending wrapping their baffle in uh, like steel wool pad. I thought, steel wool pad? That would be like a steel wool pad right there. A little SOS. And what would happen? What would happen if I shoved that up in there? And I shoved this baffle up in there beside it. And I put it right back in place and all of all the stuff had to blow through that SOS pad. It would. It would, yeah, it would. And if it didn't, it, I could take these out and blow them out. It'd be like little cannon shots going off here. <laughs> Heck, I'm going to try it. You know, it's all in fun anyway. I mean, the uh, only thing it's going to cost me is uh, a few SOS pads and bolting and unbolting these... Uh, things. I'm just going to try it and see what it sounds like. I'm crazy enough to try anything. Okay, here's the test. I uh, <laughs> shoved a brillo pad up inside each one of those things, stuck the baffle back in there. Let's see how she sounds. Okay, needs a little shot of ether. I ain't quite got her where she'll crank cold again. I'll get there though. I don't know if you can tell it or not, but that is a boatload better. Okay, here I am again. I figured if one worked pretty well, two would work better. So I'm going to uh, pull them baffles out and put another one up in there. This is very much similar to the theory of what a muffler is all about. Basically, a muffler is either packed with fiberglass, that's where glass packs come from, or with little chambers where the exhaust has to hit things and bounce around and change directions. What happens is the gas, the exhaust, can change directions, but the sound tends not to after it ricochets and echoes off of things. What this does is causing a lot of that sound to echo around inside these little fibers, not come out, but it still lets the gases pass through. It's not as good as open pipes if you drag racing. So if I go drag racing, I'll take all this crap out. But for uh, cranking around here where I don't scare the neighbors quite so bad, it's probably not a bad thing. Okay. Two SOS pads in each pipe. Well, let's see Okay, this is done, and uh, I took my grinder and kind of not only cut it out, but kind of worked the rough edges off of it there. And uh, this piece will fit on here just about like that. Yep, that's right. And uh, that'll be perfect. Okay, here's one more little point to show. Uh, as you can see, this is all sitting in here just about perfect. The uh, space on either side is just about right. That's going to give me room to put my shoes in. I'm putting this all together without packing the bearings in grease and everything because when I do that, I'll be, I won't be—I will be taking it off again. And what I'm doing right now is just kind of getting it all set up. But it's interesting to note, these bolts that came with it are made to uh, actually fit down inside of here. And this particular shoe comes with a little spacer there so that, you know, just uh, not all bolts, I guess, are the same. So what I'm going to have to do is, is just pull this spacer out 
when I do this bolt is going to go right in there it threads right here into this side of the uh, of the mounting bracket and it just kind of goes through this there's a little rubber gizmo there that that rides on and that's what this uh, drum rides on it kind of floats on that with the uh, I said drum didn't I uh, this caliper kind of floats on that with the uh, uh, pads on either side I did want to note that though because uh, you know if somebody was doing this just to make sure you know you do have to pull these little gizmos out this is a GM brake and this is a GM brake tool which I've had for 30 years or so uh, thank goodness I don't I hadn't lost it because it just fits this thing perfectly and and that's just what you need to do these brakes with it's just an oddity of this particular kind of brake I think this is the same kind of brake they had on a 69 Camaros and such as that and uh, anyway so there's all that and uh, I'll, I'll take that spacer out and put it all I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, pads in here and then put the set the wheels on it and then do the other side and then after I got everything in place and like I like it I'll, uh, I'll take it all apart and grease the bearings and everything this is a uh, this is all new stuff and it's good stuff you can see here this is uh, the, the place where my uh, uh, brake hose will connect and everything it's all looking looking nice it's good stuff I'm happy with it all right I ought to show a little bit about how all this goes together these are early GM brakes I don't know if they made them better later or not but when they first made them, you had to take the caliper off and slip the uh, pads in there. You can see the this bolt goes this bolt goes through that pad right there. So there's no way. Interestingly enough, on a like a Dodge, uh, Dodge has a little pin here I have on my Dodge truck, and you take the pin out, you can pull the, the calipers right the pads right out without having to remove the calipers. Same way on a Saab. That interests me because I didn't realize that. First time I did a dodge, I wound up taking the whole caliper off. And then after I looked at it, I thought, well, I didn't even have to do that. Uh, these weren't designed that way. I don't know if they changed the design later or not. But for what it's worth, that's how that goes. I'll put it all into place and then I'll shoot some more film. Okay, that's about what it's going to look like when it's done. Um, I actually think it looks pretty good. Uh, I had forgotten what a pain in the neck these old Chevy calipers and, shoot and uh, pads are. But I'm remembering it now. Anyway, uh, you know, even from in here, that's going to look real nice. I've got, uh, I, I bought an adapter, so I get some spoke wheels on here, and the adapter is going to work great. It's just going to fall right into place here, and then my spoke wheel should go right on top of that. Uh, I, I don't have any lug nuts. I'm going to go buy me some lug nuts. I'll go do that, and then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and set the spoke wheel on there. Okay, here's what we have after they're all on here and bolted up. Starting to get a little bit of a sense of how that's going to look. Uh, I'll do the other side and then I'll mount the tires. I want to see, I want to show it to you from the inside. There's a lot of machinery going on in there. I like it. I'm, I like it a lot. I'm just fine with it. Uh, I like that look a lot. No problem. No problem in my mind with how that looks. Uh, uh, I had some concerns about if the wheel was going to clear the caliper, but it certainly does. It's, it's all looking real good. Um, later on, I'll go on and pack those bearings and you know hook up the lines and stuff like that. But for for right now and for today, that is just plum honking. I'll do that other side. Ooh wee, she's looking like a real car now. Man. The more I look at that, the more I like it. Well, here she sits. The uh, brake job's done. Both sides. Tomorrow I'll, uh, I'll uh, mount my tires. Yes, sir. Okay, I was spending a little time out here this morning kind of scoping out the project and trying to figure out where to go next. And, uh, you know, one of the things I wondered about is this steering box. It has a, uh, it has a steering rod, which I find to be kind of interesting. With no, this is not a removable 
a joint on the end of here. It's actually made into the rod, which strikes me as a bit odd. But maybe that's the way they did it back then. Uh, you know, you would think you'd be able to replace that that joint on the end there, like sort of like these, which are are removable and adjustable. But that is one point of interest. But an even bigger point of interest is this: this box with nothing connected to it. In other words, the arm is just hanging there, so there's no pressure on it. Is is very hard to turn. It it hangs up right about here. And when you come back the other way, it does the same thing. And you can see the shaft. Uh, see if I get my camera at the right angle. The shaft is warped, which is not a very good thing. Um, and that is a problem. This thing needs to be smooth from lock to lock. It's also all welded together here so that I can't really get it apart without taking the whole shaft and everything out. I kind of like having it at a place where I can work with it. I'm thinking what I might do is just see if I can get some oil down in there and see if it'll stay. I don't know if this thing's going to leak out that, uh, out that shaft hole there or not. There's also an adjuster here on the top. See if I can get the camera where you can see that. There's a, a place there to put oil and a place there to adjust that uh, gear in there. So I might try kind of taking this thing apart. At least taking the cab off of it right here where it sits. Maybe I'll pull the headers off this side so I can get a better a better view of what I'm doing here. I might wind up pulling the whole thing off, but it seems to me like this is kind of an important part of the car that has to be made right. And uh, I'm sort of waiting on some parts right now, so it might be a good time for me to tackle that. That might be my job for today. Let's see how that goes. Okay, I've got the header off, and I've got the... I pop these four bolts out of the top of the steering box. I'm going to see if I can just lift that right off of there. And th if this works the way I think it's going to work, there's going to be a, like a screw gear that fits into another type of gear that's going to make that shaft go. These boxes are pretty simple. Um, I'm hoping I can see down in there and see the mechanism and kind of see what kind of shape the gears are in and uh, just kind of go from there. This might be something I can fix myself. That'd be good if I could. Might be time for me to talk about some hot rod theory here. I kind of go by the I can fix it mode, meaning that usually if something ain't working, if I can get it apart, very often I can fix it. That comes from back when we was kids, we really didn't have a lot of money to spend on paying somebody else to fix our cars and stuff. So if something was broke, we'd take it apart and see if we could figure it out. I'm looking at this uh, steering box. I have taken the lid off. You've got a uh, you've got a gear a, a worm gear here and another one here. Those two come together. When this thing turns, it pushes this thing around, which pushes the uh, the bar down there around, which you know activates the steering mechanism. By screwing this thing out to the point uh, where this is turned beyond the point where they're making contact, I've been able to get this to unconnect and pull this out. Of course, it's still attached to the shaft, so it's not actually free. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is this is right full of uh, ice, which means water and, and frozen crap. There's some old grease and frozen crap. But it looks to me like these gears look... Well, I started to say they look pretty decent, but I can feel some rough edges where they're worn in places. So uh, I'm sure there's a place that makes new gears for these things. See, this is just frozen grease which means this thing's right full of water and stuff too. Um, I'm thinking this can be fixed. Uh, I'm thinking it can be fixed. Okay, I decided the body needs to come off uh, for various and sundry reasons. It's hard to pick up a body like this by yourself, especially without ruining it. So, what I've rigged up here is uh, a series of ropes, and the reason I used ropes instead of chains is because I don't want them digging and scratching and tearing the metal up. It is bending the metal a little bit here and there, but not so much that I can't straighten it back out. And I've gone up to a point up there that uh, big spike goes through a 4x4 four four and then into a 6x6 six six hemlock on the other side of it. So that should be pretty sturdy. Balance is going to be the key here. I'm going to try to pick this thing up and keep it balanced and uh, I've got, I, I'm going to make a cart to set it back down on when I get through. So we'll see how it goes.
Okay, I'll talk a little bit about what we're up to today. Obviously, we got a hot rod out here with no spring shackles on the back. Just a little piece of work that someone failed to complete. Uh, there's a few problems with something like this. One is that these old bolts that have been cut off, they're wicked hard to get out of there once that's all sat for a long time. I banged this one a little bit with a hammer, but I don't know. It might have moved a little bit, but I don't think it is. My first thought was that I'd pop these springs off, put them on a drill press, Possibly heat them a little bit and kind of use the drill press to try to punch down through there. Maybe even drill them a bit. But I got to looking at this. This front end, I believe, was cut right off the car. In fact, this whole spring, if you look at how rusted that is, and also the uh, the rust rust grooves inside where that U clamp is, I believe that rear end and these springs were mated together from the factory. This is supposed to be a 57 Ford rear end. And there were some other 57 Ford parts that got used. And I'm thinking that's what this is. And they just cut this off. And the problem I got is this spring is going to be just as bad as one back there, if not worse. Where the nut used to be is gone. This will sit here like this for another 100 years. But if you were to try to get that apart, Lord help you, you'd have a nice day. So what I'm going to try to do is without removing the springs, first of all, get these little pegs out. And then secondly, after that, uh, make me some shackles back here fabricate up something which would be the easy part to be honest with you if i can get them pins out i'll work on that a bit okay i've tried two or three different ways to get these things out including hammering them using an the air hammer on them different things like that um, i considered taking my welder i don't have a, a real torch and things like that i thought about taking my welder and trying to heat those centers up enough to punch them out but if even if i did they'd probably make marshmallows out of that rubber so what i think i'm what i'm doing here instead is just heating the outside of the spring up with the hope that it will uh, cause that rubber to kind of start to jellify, jellify inside that spring. Then I just poke the whole thing out. Once I get it all out, I get me some new rubbers and new shackles and go that way. I think that'll work. Well, she's got a pretty good burn going there. She's getting hot enough to crinkle the paint on the top of that shackle. And she's a smoldering and smothering and this stuff. I think I'll hit it with a hammer and see what happens. Well, that worked. There's the little piece that came out of it. All the rubber and the everything. And there's my my spring end is all nice and pretty, ready for some new shackles. This reminds me of that movie I, I seen when I was a, well, I wasn't really a kid, but what was the name of that movie? Had all those mythical figures in it, and this kid's house burned down, and at the end of it, they opened the microwave, and there was something in there that looked about like that, and he said, don't touch it, it's evil. Okay, okay, we got one side out, and it actually looked pretty good. That was a pretty good way to get that out of there. I'm working on the other side now. I'll heat it up and then hammer it out the same way. I'll let this side cook till it gets good and good and smoky and then I'll hammer it out. Okay, I got the evil out of the other side. There it is right there. Sitting there just smoking in the pond and itself. So I guess I'm gonna have to find me a new project. I don't want to build spring shackle hangers till I have the shackles and the rubbers to go in them. But I might build them wrong. So I guess I'll just let this part up rest and work on something else for a while. Okay, there she is all up in the air. And there's my 
trusty hot rod without its skin. This is going to give me a good chance to do a lot of stuff here as far as changing this out. Look at there, I'm leaking some antifreeze. Dang. Uh, it surprised me that I guess the bolts that held the body in back here were the same bolts that held the spring shackles in place. Although that don't look right. Something ain't right. I can't, I gotta figure this out because those, those springs shouldn't be flying up in the air like that. Looks to me like I'd call that not completed. Something needs to be addressed. That'll be my job while I got this thing apart. Right now what I need to do is get this flying roadster down on the ground. And I've got these old coffin dolly wheels. Uh, I think my dad bought these at a yard sale somewhere along the way. They were uh, part of a contraption they used to use to put under a coffin. Like when you bury somebody in the church and they roll the coffin down the front. Well these would be the wheels they would use. So they probably hauled off a lot of dead folk. They'll do to set my roadster on. I'm going to put a couple boards across on them, build them into a little square table kind of thing, and then lower the roadster down on top of that. I'm going to cut this thing off. This is, uh, somebody was setting this up for a drag link, which I don't really need. This is going to be a street use vehicle, and I'm not going to be drag racing it. There's a few little goodies and gizmos like this thing sticking out here that probably connected to a fender at some point in this car's life. I don't need that. I'll take that off. Okay, here we have it. I've got that piece uh, ground off. I don't think it looks too bad. And you know, nobody's ever going to see it because the back of the cab is going to sit right here. And there's going to be a floor back here. It's where uh, me and my honey will set our little picnic basket when we go to the car shows and stuff like that. Up here on the side here, I, uh, I ground that off. To uh, be honest with you, you can barely tell it was ever there. That's where that thing used to be sticking out at. So, good work for me. Probably not going to paint this part today. I'm going to need to pull the motor out first. This is the uh, engine mount. It's, it's pretty wicked ugly. It's very functional, but you know you could take a grinder and just smooth the smooth the rough edges out of it, make it look a heck of a lot better. I would... <laughs> looking at this is that same engine mount remember before it was all square and had a little piece sticking out it looked like it was homemade out of angle iron I just took a grinder and worked her over it looks a bit more uh, I don't know a bit more smoothly fitting into the car I could probably do a little bit more work on the edges here uh, I, I show you what the other side looks like that hadn't been worked on uh, see it's Looks like a block of uh, cut up metal welded together, whereas when I work the edges down on it over here, uh, it starts to look a lot more like it grew on there. I used to read these car magazines when I was a kid and they'd talk about making it look like it grew there. And you can do that by, you know, just rounding off the edges and doing a little, uh, doing a little grinding. It helps a lot. I've uh, tightened up the uh, motor mounts. I shouldn't say tighten them up, but I've smoothed them out on both sides. Uh, 
I thought I was going to wait till I got the motor out to do that, but I decided to go ahead and do at it. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about what we got here. Uh, I went ahead and pulled this thing off the off the car. This is the uh, the steering box. This is supposed to be a 57 Ford steering box, and I don't doubt it. It, it probably is. Looks like I didn't see anything online that really matched it. A lot of uh, Ford truck boxes are kind of similar, but it doesn't look like the bolt holes are going to match up. But I don't think it matters too much if the bolt holes don't match up. If we uh, get the camera over here where you can kind of look at how this thing bolts to the frame. It's just a couple pieces of the angle iron that somebody's put up there. And if I needed to re-drill them, remount the box, I don't think that's much of a problem. One thing I am thinking about, and I got this trouble with my, my other hot rod, the Rambler right there. It doesn't have power steering. And when you don't have power steering, it just takes a whole lot of the fun out of the, out of the riding around. Uh, whoever put this thing on here, they welded it. This is the steering shaft. It comes into this joint, and then uh, there's a bolt hole here to clamp this on to the uh, 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 shaft out of the steering box. Instead of putting a bolt through there, they welded it, which means that the only way to get this apart is to grind all this weld off, which is just exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to grind all this weld off so that my shaft is all free and clear here because I'm thinking even though I might take this this box apart and just mess around with it see if I can tighten it up a bit I'm thinking for all intents and purposes I just so much rather have power steering that it would be worth it to uh, go ahead and replace this with a power steering box and acquire a, a pump once you get a box on there it's not that hard to hook up a pump I'd have to get some double pulleys and stuff but I think in the long run I'd be a lot happier if I did that so I think what I'm gonna do is just grind this off of here so that I can get this thing, this part loose, and then just, just kind of take it from there. Okay, I got that done. This is the uh, this is the shaft, and it was like I said, it was all welded in here. And I, I I took the grinder and I just cut around the edge of that weld, so that now I got my little U joint here, kind of really uh, all set to go into a decent steering box if I can find one and get it just right. Uh, I'm going to study on this a while and and, and then try and decide which would be the very best way to go as far as getting the right box. But I'm thinking another Ford type box, Ford truck type box should work. Uh, that's that's the plan. So I, I am going to take this other one here and uh, I'm going to, I am going to mess around with this thing because, you know, just heck, it'd be fun to clean it all up and check out the mechanism and uh, I was thinking that this thing had to have a warped shaft. I still think it has a warped shaft right here, uh, which is not good. But it might be fun just to see how close I can get and how good I can get it to work, because basically all it would take is bolting it back on there to make it uh, workable. Uh, so I don't know. We'll just, we just might play around with that a little bit. We'll see. Okay, I guess this is worth shooting. This is the whole thing apart, and this is a pretty simple mechanism uh, you know this is the shaft that goes down that uh, runs the rod that turns the front wheels and this is the part of the shaft that goes up toward the steering column and uh, this gear just fits in here and when it turns it it turns this thing like so that's how a steering column works basically um, it, it, interesting this bearing fell out of it and it's just absolutely caked in ice <laughs> which is kind of interesting but Looks like the bearing itself is in pretty decent shape. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, clean this all up and put it back together and, and just study the action of it and see if I can decide whether it's, uh, you know, anything I want to mess with or not. That won't take me long. And then we'll just decide. I'm still leaning toward the power steering deal, but, uh, you know, it might be fun to put this back together just to see how close I can get it to being work more workable than it was. Okay, here's the inside of the steering box, and it's kind of sad. Uh, this actually, this part right here actually looks good. I, I didn't realize this thing was a roller when it was inside there. It was so crammed up with gook that you couldn't tell. It's got nice little bearings in it. This part here, though, uh, is, well, for one thing, you can see that bearing right there is just wasted. Now, that might could be replaced, but then if you look closer... I don't know if you can see that where the the there's really some gaps along. I think you can see that 
really some chips, gaps. The teeth are just really edged off and flattened out and wore out and about broken. I don't think I'm going to fix this thing. You know, to be honest with you, the, the money I would spend to fix this, I could buy a pretty good steering box. I was just looking online and I could pick up something pretty similar. I probably had to redrill the holes and refigure the mounting, but uh, I can pick up something pretty similar uh, for a decent price, plus get power steering in the deal. So I think that's the way I'm going to go. So my old girl's just going to sit here without a steering box for a few days while I locate another one, and uh, I'll move on to a different project. Okay, I want to pull the motor out, but I want to do it in such a way that it doesn't dance all around and scratch up these old valve covers and you know I, I don't want to go to the trouble of pulling out my distributors and and I don't want to break off you know I don't want to take any chance of damaging any of this old stuff here so I've made myself a little little uh, rig here it's basically just a piece of angle iron with a chain to the front and the back of the engine on both sides I'm going to be pulling this out with the transmission I'm hoping with this rig with the weight of the transmission on the back, it will prevent it from tilting too much. And when I pull the transmission out, it will still kind of keep the engine balanced. So I won't be wrestling with a 500-pound monster, you know, which I've done before with engines. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd show off my little chain pull invention there, and then, uh, then we'll pull the motor out.
put a little extra brace right there where the frame cracks. Speaking of crack, it is literally a crack right there. I don't know if you can see at the top of that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut the little diamond that I'm going to use to put over there on that frame. I've got it marked off here with a piece of soapstone. I'm using these little uh, cutting wheels on my grinder. They're very thin, and you can use them to make your cut. I don't have a, uh, a metal cutter. I don't have torches, and I don't have a, what do they call them, newfangled things they cut metal with. Now, I wish I did. I intended to get some before I started this pro project, but, you know, you only got so much money, and you only spend it on so many things. Uh, and right now, well, I spend it on getting this garage fashioned up and then, uh, you know, and then on some parts for the hot rod. So I guess I'm going to build this one without the aid of a, of a cutter, a uh, plasma cutter, but you know, <clears throat> oh well, it'll still get done. And you know what? They was making hot rods before they invented plasma cutters. So what the heck? <laughs> stick welding. I grew up with a stick welder. Uh, I never had a fancy uh, MIG welder until I got older and really haven't really learned to use it all that well. Anyway, I got my piece in place here. I'm going to weld it along this side, uh, put a few spot welds in there to hold it. I'm going to bang the top out of it with a hammer, which is going to draw this end of the frame. You can see that's sticking out a little bit because it's not exactly flush and straight there. This isn't a show quality fame frame, it's going to be a functional frame. I just want it to work and be strong and not come apart while I'm bebopping down the road. I had a buddy that built a 20, 23T model back when I was a kid. I wasn't, well, I was, maybe I was 19, 20, 21 years old. First time he took, out, took it out, the radius rods folded up and the front end folded up on him and he had to bring it home on a wrecker. He just didn't use heavy enough metal for his radius rods. He made them himself, bless his heart. But he got that fixed and he was okay after that. I, I don't want to take this thing out and have it, have any part of it fold up on me. I want it to be good and sturdy. So I'm going to do a little welding there. Anyway, uh, this looks pretty good. Uh, it's done. Uh, let's see, am I getting a good shot at it? There you go. Uh, I might take a wire brush or grinder and clean it up a little bit, or I, I might just leave it. But That's better. I feel better about that. I've never in my life seen anything quite like this before. <laughs> Uh, this is the old Dynaflow transmission. These transmissions were uh, put in the Cadillacs after the factory burned down where they were making the hydromatics. Look at this torque converter. Holy cow. And it doesn't slip out like it does in a, in, in a Chevy transmission. You know how you take the torque converter, it kind of slides out, there's a shaft there. Well, this ain't like that. It looks like it's actually sort of connected into the motor. There is a, a big nut here that maybe would release that. But man, what a piece of work that thing is. Look, Just look at that. It's actually just about beautiful. Uh, almost makes me think it's a shame not to run it. You know, I, if I wasn't just so dang prone to liking gears, and I do like gears, I love to shift. Man, it'd be tempting to just keep that thing. Well, I have that as an option. You know, I'm trying to figure out how to put a straight shift to this, and it's not that easy to do because these aren't like anything else, really. But uh, the motor's loose. The transmission's loose. I'd be willing to bet that thing weighs on the leg. I don't know if I can pick it up or not. Let's just see what it feels like. I'm going to get my camera here to sit where I can go. Right here. 
pass along a little bit. Uh, let's just see. as young as I used to be, and I don't have to prove anything, so, anyway, I got my motor up in the air, I got my frame where I get to the steering box nice and easy to work on that, uh, I'm going to build me some kind of little dolly for that motor to sit on in the meantime, and, uh, and then I'll lift that transmission up and figure out a way to, my shop's getting full of junk, and interestingly enough, as I take the car apart, the shop gets fuller and fuller, because all this stuff is stacked around the corners and edges and all. It uh, took up a lot of space when it was all in one piece. Anyway, uh, I think I'll build that dolly next and then I'll uh, set the engine down, lift that transmission out, get it out of the way, and then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Okay, here's a little Hot Rod 101. This is a trick I, I learned a long time ago. Works. Um, these are the old shocks that came off the girl. Uh, these are the kind that have the little thing, a little pointy screw thing that goes through on both ends. These are a set that came off my other hot rod. Um, this goes through the pointy end. But down here, you've got this little circular hickey that requires a, a peg, something like this. Well, what I've done before is take a bolt like this and weld it right here. Put a piece of rubber on top of that. Put it through. Put a you know thing on the other end of it. It's good as gold. Uh, worst thing that can happen is this breaks off and I have to buy me a, a, a new shot or fix it or whatever, but never had one break off yet. A lot of uh, hot rod work is making your own parts or making parts that you have do rather than going out and spending more money for stuff you don't have. That's what I'm going to do. shocks down here they're just sitting in there so that they have a place to be they're not bolted or anything the one on the right is actually facing the right direction uh, the other one's upside down uh, those will do you know I was thinking I might ride down the road and some guy will see those welded up shots and they'll say that boy there can't afford a, a fair shot what kind of hot rodder is he and my answer would be I guess I'm the kind of hot rodder that makes stuff out of what he's got you can't deal with that buzz off bozo that's the way I am Okay, for my next project, I'm going to make an engine dolly to sit this engine on so that I can roll it around. And I'm not talking about an engine stand. I've got a couple of engine stands over here. I mean, a, just a little cart kind of thing where I can roll the engine back out of the way. My garage is getting full because i got my car all pulled apart. The body back there takes up space. The frame takes up space. Engine, transmissions all got to come apart. I've got these old wheels and I've got this trailer axle that I found in a literally at the dump it was thrown out beside the dumpster and the guy said he didn't mind if I took it home it's not really good enough to make a real trailer out of it's pretty rusty and bearings are probably shot but it'd be good to roll that motor around on so I'm gonna cut that thing down short create an engine mount right on it and uh, stick it on the bottom of that engine build a little backside for it out of something uh, maybe use these I don't know if I'll use these smaller wheels for the uh, wheels on the back of it or whether I'll get me some little dolly, little uh, caster. I got some metal caster wheels upstairs I might use for that. Uh, and I might save these little wheels to go into that transmission, do the same thing, just make a little transmission axle that I can slip up under that and then grab the tail shaft and roll it around. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Okay, it's done. Uh, if there's a weak point in it, it's those two small caster wheels in the back. Okay, here's my engine dolly that I made the other day. Now the weak point on this engine dolly is these back casters. If you see them right here, they're okay, sort of, for as long as I'm just gently rolling this around on this concrete. But if I want to roll this thing back in there over that little hump and down onto that wood floor, uh, it's just going to really encourage them things to break off. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to invent something about like this. Let me take the camera down and see if you can see what I'm doing. Maybe that'll work. Maybe it won't. I've got a wheel and a bar 
and another wheel that I can put together in some fashion sort of like this here. Bring those two together, bring this one over here, attach that to that. This will allow this to become something like this, which I can roll up under here and up underneath the back of this gizmo there's a little hole up in here maybe you can see that and this pen or a pen like this would fit up into that hole so if I made if I put these two wheels together and I made a bar it would come down from like about where I'm standing and reach out with a pen sticking up and I push down on the bar it's going to lift up on the back of that motor I can use this little wheel hickey to steer this engine around and take it wherever I want it to go. Um, I don't even have to mount it to these two wheels. I can put a piece of angle iron over them. I'll show you what I'm talking about if I can find one right quick. Yeah, here you go. I can take a piece of angle iron like this, bring it down in here, attach one end to go out with a little fork that'll go up underneath that and attach the other end to come up toward where I'm standing or even even put a piece of pipe that I could slip a prize bar into and pull that up. Anyway, that's going to be my next invention. I don't know if you can follow all that or not, but it'll, it'll all make sense once I get it built. I'm probably not going to build it today, but it's coming. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to rework this front end mount here. I'm going to make me a, uh, take me a, I got some heavy iron over there. I'm going to cut me a piece that will come across here. I'll hammer this down flat and come back here. It'll be like a little L and I'll uh, weld that all together. I'm also going to cut um, down here. These stick out and if you look at this one over here, it is sticking out farther than the spring so if this spring went up it would hit the frame so I will trim that off on both of these and then what I'll do is um, I'll be welding a piece flat across the front I'm going to want to get this spring off here to do that and it may give me an opportunity to weld a piece that actually goes across here and kind of extends out a little bit into into this bar to give it a little extra strength there too so that's kind of what we're working on uh, probably the best place to start is to get that front end off. So I guess I'll work on that.
Okay, I guess that's enough work for today. I was uh, rushing to try to get it all painted with the idea that I could flip it over tomorrow. But then it kind of occurred to me, well, it ain't going to be dry that quick. So, what's the rush?